Hello and welcome back to Desert DIY. If you are new here, my name is Corey. Today I'm going to be showing you how I flipped this desk that I picked up from somebody's driveway. They were cleaning out their garage and this was actually being used as like a work table. It is particle board and not of the finest quality, but I saw that the bones were still there and it was structurally sound, so I wanted to make sure that I could fix up this piece to still be useful to somebody and I have actually already donated it to somebody. So the person that I donated it to is somebody who also aged out of foster care and she is a young mom, an awesome woman, super creative as well and she really likes uh, maroons and burgundies and golds and black. Very elegant taste if you ask me. So I made sure that I flipped this piece to be something that she would appreciate. And if you like what you see, don't forget to hit subscribe. I love to do furniture flips, thrift store makeovers, and uh, lots of trash and treasures. So if that's something you like, then hit subscribe down below. And here we go. This is what I was starting with on this piece. It had lots of damage to it. Like I was saying, it was used as a work table in a garage, so I did not have high expectations for the condition that I was in. It was free, so I took it. It's less waste going into the dump, and now it's going to have purpose, and somebody's going to appreciate it. So the first thing I do is kind of assess and take things apart and look at what I'm dealing with. Uh, I definitely knew I didn't want to use those handles that were on it already and I had some other handles in mind and all I did was just tighten up all of the screws and make sure that everything was nice and sturdy before I started sanding. And in this corner on the leg here there was some damage where a chunk of the wood had gotten taken out so I just took my 220 grit sandpaper and sanded it nice and smooth so that way it wasn't a jagged edge there and something very important to know when you're doing trash to treasures like this one is is that you can't have extremely high expectations for a 100 percent perfect finish you're really mostly going for a finish that looks really nice and that you're happy with but it's not going to be perfect uh, it, this piece is made of particle board so anything really is going to be an upgrade compared to what it looked like before and i was actually really surprised with how this one came out since I was saying that the person I was making this for likes burgundies and maroons, I used the same color, it's like a wine color, in spray paint by rust -Oleum. And I took some of your guys' advice and got one of those spray paint handles. And you were 100% right. <laughs> it makes a world of difference, not only in the coverage of the paint being more even, but it just doesn't hurt my hand and my fingers don't get exhausted halfway through the project. I have used this thing maybe for six projects now already I think <laughs> I have to really think about it but I have used the heck out of this little handle and I absolutely love it so if you're somebody who wants to start painting and using spray paint since it is very easy to use I highly re recommend getting one of these things and all I did was about three coats of paint on here before it looked really great again it's not going to be perfect because it is particle board so the texture of the piece you can't perfectly smooth it out but this is what it was looking like as the paint was still wet you could still see that wood grain coming through as a texture and i actually really liked how that looked and for the top there's really no going back on this piece if you painted it you would still see all the issues underneath the paint as far as the texture is concerned. And this faux wood edge here just had to go. There's no gluing that thing back on or smoothing it out with a sander. So I just used a chisel and chiseled it all off of the edge so that way I had a flat surface. Now the next part after I finished taking off this edge and I did sand the top with 220 grit when I was doing my sanding. I just didn't get that on camera, unfortunately, but all I did was just smooth it as much as I could. And once that was done, I decided that I wanted to cover this top with a peel and stick countertop material. I got this one that I'm going to use off of Amazon and you'll see it pretty soon here. But the main thing you need to remember when doing peel and stick is that you have to get all of the dust and dirt off. So I made sure to clean it really well and get as much of the dust and specks of dirt off as I could. It can hide some textures, but like little pieces of like sand or anything like that will show through in the peel and stick because it is pretty like a pretty thin material. So I just made sure that I cleaned it as best as I could. But this is it. <laughs> what do you guys think of this black wood grain? 
I have bought furniture from Ikea that has like a black wood grain, although there is no texture to the Ikea ones. This one actually has a wood grain texture to it. So when you touch it, it has the, you can feel the lines and the texture of wood grain in it. And it was so easy to put on. All I did was cut two pieces to size and then peel back the sticker part off the back and then smooth it onto the piece. It was really, really simple. I couldn't believe it how easy this was. The only part that's a little tedious is this beginning part. You want to make sure you're peeling back the sticker evenly so that you don't rip it on accident. So that's the only part that was kind of a little bit irritating in the beginning, especially for somebody like me who just wants to like go, go, go and get the project done. Having to take some time to do that can be a little annoying. <laughs> Not gonna lie. But then you just go over to the edge and you stick it on. And I wanna give you guys some really good instructions here. So that way, if you try this, you'll be successful in your application of this kind of product. I'm not sponsored or anything. <laughs> I just really liked using this product on top of faux wood. When it's already faux wood, you can cover it without having anything on your conscience, you know. <laughs> it's already fake, so putting fake on top of it isn't gonna hurt. And the main thing I want to express to you guys here in, in the application process is that you have to uh, smooth it from the middle outwards. So you see how my hand is mostly in the center of the roll. I just smooth the center first and then you spread outward after you get the center part smoothed on. I learned this when doing drawer liners and doing um, decoupage and stuff. So I just use that same sort of mindset when doing the peel and stick. I've also done peel and stick wallpaper in my house and um, I really like how that works out. It looks really nice. And when you go over the edge, you're gonna just push down really hard and slide over the edge so that way it gets all the air bubbles out because it tends to collect air around the corner there on the edge. And for some reason, I did not get on camera how I cut the edges, but I just smoothed the edges over like that, and then I pinched the corner stickers together. So I pinched it really hard to where they were like as tight as I could get it. So you can't see it on the camera there, but I just pinched them together and then cut it with the scissors straight along the corner of the piece. So that way it was like a perfectly straight cut and tight corner there. Ugh, the camera just missed it. I can't believe that. <laughs> That's really the only thing that was a little difficult as far as the trimmings go, is doing the corners. So just take your time, and sometimes it helps to kind of fold the corners over back and forth so that you really get a nice, perfect crease before cutting it. Another thing that I want to let you guys know about this kind of product is that the edges, how I fold them over, they tend to not stick very well along the edges. So I used some super glue. This is a super glue accelerator, so it makes the super glue dry almost instantly. And that way I don't have to hold things down. It, it actually makes the project go a lot faster and is more successful that way. That way you're not having to... Um, keep pressing down on such a large area. You can't press down all at once on this huge edge. So when, if it's drying more instantly, it works better. <laughs> I hope I'm explaining that well enough for you guys to understand, but I'll leave a link below to this product. Um, the brand is called Starbond and I've been very happy with it so far. I just put it along the edge there after spraying the accelerator on and then smoothed it. You see how I go from the top and then push down over the edge so that way I don't have any air bubbles in there. But like I was saying, it dries pretty instantly so you can see that it sticks really well right away. And you just keep smoothing it out. It kind of reminded me of when you're putting on um, the fake nails, you know, you glue on the nails. I'm actually wearing glue on nails in this video. And so I kind of did the same thing here that I would do with glue on nails which is just press down until it dries and then I took a regular old razor blade and lined it up along the underneath side of the desk and cut the product to be perfect to the size of the edge of the desk here you just got to kind of take your time and let the razor glide make sure that you're using a brand new razor because older razors even if you only use them once they get very dull and you can start having issues with cutting and you don't want to accidentally pull up any of that product and have it get all wrinkled or anything like that so just be very slow and let the razor do all the work now i'm going to take that same razor and use the corner of the razor to cut tiny little holes in any air bubbles that I got in the piece. You can't even really see the air bubbles in the video. Um, 
it's just the way the lighting is, I guess, and the way the texture of the table looks. But at any little area where I felt like there was a bit of an air bubble, I just took that corner of the razor like this, pushed it down, and then pressed with my finger, and it gets the air out. It works better than trying to push that bubble all the way to the edge. Here is the handle that I chose. I actually bought these handles off Amazon in bulk and I was going to use them for a different project and I decided to do something else for that project so I had these lying around and since she likes gold along with her burgundy and black I thought that these would be perfect. And please excuse my camera here. It was like having a party of its own and it gets like focusing, unfocusing, focusing, unfocusing. It was driving me nuts watching this and editing it. But I know that it is... It's part of the fun watching the handle get put on, so I thought it was still important to have this part in the video. <laughs> uh, do you like my handles? Let me know in the comments down below what you think of these handles. They're called uh, T handles or T drawer pulls, and I will have them linked in my Amazon store down below as well. They were very affordable. But here is how it looks when it's done. It's very obvious that it is a faux wood finish on the top, but I don't feel so sorry about it because I started off with a faux wood finish on the top. It looks really good to me and the person that received this piece was very happy with it and honestly that's all that matters. I also surprised her with some fun little papers inside the drawers which this is just um, scrapbook paper that I cut out to fit inside the drawer and I thought it was just something fun to make it a little more whimsy since I'm a pretty whimsical type of gal. <laughs> These book boxes on top of the desk as well as the golden lamp I also donated to her. I got the book boxes from a yard sale haul, my massive yard sale haul that I have on my channel if you want to watch it. And then the lamp that is on the table, that golden lamp, I bought it at an auction and it had a really old broken lampshade. So I just bought a lampshade and spray painted it black so that way it was something that would fit her decor aesthetic that she liked. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to hit subscribe down below and I will see you next time. Bye!